CBS News Station. This is Cron 4 News Weekend. All right, well, coming up next, we've been talking about uh, la Henry's last guest talked about Iran's turbulent politics. Well, now it's time for the country's culture. And a rich culture it is. The uh, Persian culture, of course, is one of the most ancient, contemporary Iranian culture. Uh, it's vibrant. What do we know about it? Not much. Our next guest, Yulafar Talabi, is going to talk to us a little bit about a festival that's coming up that is going to explore the literary culture of contemporary Iran. That's coming up on Cron 4 News Weekend. Contemporary culture of Iran is tremendously rich, very little known. It's the subject of a conference, uh, actually a festival that's taking place uh, over the next week. It's the Iranian Literary Arts Festival. And we have Nilafar Talabi with us. Uh, she is the organizer. She's also a translator and uh, a writer and, uh, and one of the great organizers. She puts on more events. <laughs> she runs the translation project. So um, first of all, contemporary Iranian culture, contemporary Iranian writing, does it reflect the, the tension within Iran right now between the more liberal side and the, uh, and the hardline government? I think there's a lot of things that are reflected in contemporary literature. There's a lot of uh, literature, of course, that's being created outside of Iran in the Persian language by people who have left Iran. And that, of course, reflects a whole different uh, subject, array of subject matters and the literature that's inside Iran. The literature that's inside Iran being created there, again, a variety. I think there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of writers who have stepped away from uh, political issues and have chosen more um, universal, more personal subject matters in order to adapt to living under um, constant censorship. Um, and so the work that we concentrate on mainly at this point reflects the work of people who have uh, lived outside of Iran since the revolution and who have created a body of work that uh, has not necessarily been recognized as literature as part of the main literary canon and by bringing this literature to the attention of the world as well as to the Iranian people we're trying to sort of bridge that gap. So the, the literature, contemporary literature now, um, it follows in the tradition of the Persian culture, which is, of course, one of the most ancient, one of the richest. Um, you know, we're talking about poets like Rumi, and yet uh, we we hear so little about that culture in its modern form. Why is that? That's obviously one of the subjects you'll be talking about. But why is Iranian culture s s so lost in America and apparently in the world, really? This is a huge puzzle to me as well, and this is why I started this organization called The Translation Project. I thought at least we'll, with creating uh, literary translations of contemporary 20th and 21st century works, we could, uh, we could bring this literature to a global audience and sort of address that problem from, from that point of view. Um, we have, uh, the festival has, is, is seven days long, uh, five days long, starting November 13th, uh, through November 17th. On November 17th, we have two uh, very interesting talks, uh, one by Dr. Fatima Keshavaz, who's written a book called uh, Jasmine and Stars, reading more than Lolita in Tehran. So you can see the, <laughs> <laughs> see the reference there. So this will be an interesting, uh, she'll address why literature has been, this literature has been invisible a little bit and uh, w what are the elements that keep it invisible. It, do you think it has anything to do with the focus of interest within the, the Iranian culture today that somehow doesn't, let's say Americans or Europeans just don't relate to very much? I think that is definitely um, that is definitely a, a reason for it. And we have another person, Moniru Ravanipur, who is a very, very famous writer, a noted uh, Iranian writer. She's here um, for two years as a fellow at the Black Mountain Institute, and she'll address that very subject. Why is it that we have perhaps our literature, has, contemporary literature, has remained perhaps a little bit local, a little bit too focused internally? Um, and that's, again, going to be, I'm sure, a very interesting talk with a lot of heated discussions You've afterwards. You've got to have a theory. Me? Yes. I, I, my theory is an amalgam of uh, everybody else's uh, sort of uh, uh, point Did of Did I put you on the spot there? <laughs> <laughs> well, but it, there is, the subject matter really is different, and is that just because the country is in such ferment, the culture is in such ferment? No, the subject matter has, if it, if it is indeed that reason, it's been different for a long time. I mean, even yes. in the 70s, people might have been writing literature that's a little bit more focused. But I don't know if that's necessarily the only reason. I, I, surely there's a lot of literature being written that would speak to a person who might read it in translation in Guatemala. But why that is not being done yet, this is a question that we're addressing. And hopefully we're doing our part in bringing the literature out at least in English so far. How do you think that uh, contemporary uh, Iranian culture reflects the general mood of the populace 
uh, in terms of its feelings about uh, their government. Well, if they have any feelings against the government, that particular writer, they have to mask it in many different metaphors and allusions. So, uh, again, I think literature has its own way of adapting. Iran is not the only country in the world that has been under censorship. Mm -hmm. uh, other, many other countries over the, the ages have uh, faced this very thing. Excuse me, but um, what about the emigre community? There's a huge one you mentioned down in Los yes. Angeles. Uh, do they write at all about politics? They do, absolutely. They have a lot of blogs, there's a lot of literature being created. And do you created. think it reflects the general populace? I mean, how do you reflect a populace as large and diverse as it's, Iran? It's hard, obviously. it's very hard. I mean, you can't really reflect the entire nation. Um, just like, you know, Norman Mailer did not address the, inter did not reflect the entire American public. But he didn't? <laughs> he did, but, you know, not, right. it, yes. So, um, I think the main uh, the main point of view for people who write outside of Iran is is their own uh, journey in terms of coming to terms with with being a people who are not living within their own uh, right. land. <coughs> so there are really two two threads to this. There is those struggling within the country and those dealing with the fact that they are in effect exiled or at least outside the country. Yes. Okay, so uh, the Iranian Literary Arts Festival is taking place November 13th through the 17th. That's this Tuesday through Saturday. It's happening at Theatre Artaud, 450 Florida Street in San Francisco. It is not an aptly named festival. I'm sorry, Neil Lafar, <laughs> but you've got film and you've got uh, uh, theater and you've got dance, spectacular dance events Saturday night. Uh, for information, call City Box Office 415-392-4400, or you can go to the translationproject.org, and I can tell Neil Afar wants to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to add one other thing? I do, I do, I do want to talk about it. You're right, it may not be aptly named, but everything relates to literature. The films that we are showing for two nights um, are about Iranian writers, and uh, the theater that we're presenting, of course, the, the panels on Saturday are all about literature, right. but the theater that we're presenting is based on the works of contemporary writers who are all alive and it's exquisite we have a wonderful choreographer Alex Ketley and a, a composer <coughs> Bobak Salehi I'm sorry this is this is like the Academy <laughs> Awards when the music starts the producer we we have to go but thank That's you so okay. much for joining thank us I hope thank you for inviting me Henry. I really well. appreciate it thank you Marty all right thank you very much